move it up just a tiny bit. It's always been a problem. Uh, good evening. Uh, thank you very much. and appreciate everybody taking uh, the time out of your busy schedule, especially on a very beautiful evening to be here uh, this evening. Thank you very much for hosting uh, this event. And also, uh, I would also like to thank the congressman for hosting this educational format. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get started uh, by giving you uh, basically a little bit of a history. Uh, energy is in the news literally every single day. And I think it's very important to understand why are we talking about uh, energy in the first place. Uh, according to the Department of Energy, their Energy Information Administration, we are currently using 100 quadrillion BTUs of energy each year. To try and put that into perspective, last year Ohio celebrated the 151st anniversary of the first commercial well that was ever drilled here in the state of Ohio. I know we'll talk about well construction later, but you know what that well construction was back then? It was just hollowed out tree trunks. Our first pipelines here in the state of Ohio were also hollowed out tree trunks. So we've come a long way. In 150 years, we are now using 100 quadrillion. As you can see from this uh, chart up here, oil and gas currently makes up over 60% of our energy needs. Uh, in addition to that, oil and gas also uh, makes a lot of products that most of us use every day. That is followed by coal about 23%, nuclear about 8%, Hydro about 3%, and right now all of our renewables combined make up about 3%. What's rather startling is that in less than two decades, we will go from 100 quadrillion to 124 quadrillion. These are really staggering energy numbers. And the reality is no one energy source can do it all. We should never invest in just one energy source. We need to look at all energy sources. But what you don't see changing up here very much is this pie chart. And it's not going to change very much, at least for the next half century or possibly much longer. But when you start looking at even our renewable energies, when you go from 3 to 5%, and 5% of 124 quadrillion, that starts becoming significant. So again, we need all energy sources. But again, oil and gas will continue to make up a big part of it. What's driving these energy demands? Well, the reality is it's technology. Uh, how many people in here do not have a cell phone? How many people in here do not have a television or a computer? 20% of our electricity use alone is just for computers. We're not using fewer computers. And I always say the two hardest things to explain in the general public is number one, what is going on five to 14,000 feet underneath the ground here in Ohio? And number two, that energy doesn't come from those two little slices in the wall where we plug everything in, okay? But you know, the sad thing about it today, um, when I go into the classrooms and we're working on science projects, you know, kids today think that milk comes from the grocery store, you know? And I guess that round cows make chocolate milk. Um, but uh, again, I mean, it's, it's very sad that people really do not understand the very fundamentals of how we produce energy uh, here in this country. Uh, the top of that here uh, gives you an idea of where the 274,000 wells have been drilled here in the state of Ohio. Oil and gas development is not new to the state. In fact, today, we can produce oil and gas out of over 30 different geological formations. Uh, the map below that shows where the 64,000 active wells have been grown. Um, and this is where currently most of the production is uh, here in the state of Ohio. Uh, what most people don't realize, uh, last year, we, we drilled uh, 460 wells here in the state of Ohio. But 30 years ago, we drilled over 6,000 wells in the state of Ohio in one single year. We are never going to drill 6,000 wells again in the state of Ohio in a single year. Why? 
technology has changed significantly. And if you even think about, uh, we can drill wells vertically, we'll continue to drill many wells vertically. We can now drill wells directionally, and we can also drill wells horizontally. And if you think about just a horizontal lateral alone, it replaces 32 vertical wells being drilled. So for a landowner, you're reducing the environmental surface impact. And if you even think about water usage and other things, by the time you multiply those 32 wells, doing this one time with a hole in the ground about 25 inches in diameter, we make great progress in terms of our environmental footprint today. Uh, last year, here in the state of Ohio, we produced over 73 billion cubic feet of natural gas. And what you don't hear about much in Ohio is many emergencies. And we've got many programs, we've got solid regulations in place, and there may be some others that will speak to that. And we produce about 4.9 million barrels of crude oil. We've never been a huge crude oil producing state, uh, but I think that may change. And uh, we'll talk about that here in uh, just a little bit. Uh, we left these uh, fact sheets out there for you because, again, I, I just want to kind of point out here in Stark County, we have drilled over 6,400 wells in Stark County. Many people are shocked by that. And today, there's almost 3,000 active wells just in Stark County alone. Here in Stark County, produced about 6.7 billion cubic feet of natural gas. And the neat thing about that is since seven out of every 10 homes here in the state of Ohio uses natural gas, we produce a lot of our own energy needs. So almost 100% of that stays right here in our own backyard. And I think that's a very positive thing. Uh, in terms of uh, royalties of landowners, now this does not include sign-on bonuses and others. Just last year, over $9 million was paid out in royalties to local landowners. And that is money being spent in the communities. Uh, so again, these become significant number, numbers. And again, this is just our county. Uh, this uh, gives you an idea of why we are so reliant on foreign crude. This, I love this picture because this is from National Geographic. And what I like about it even more is this is a Stowe, Ohio family. And it gives you an idea of all the different products that are refined from crude oil that we use every single day. In fact, there's not a single person in here that is not using petroleum to either get here or what you're wearing or the very toothbrush that you brush your teeth with this morning. Now, natural gas is different and that natural gas is a vapor. And natural gas, as most of you know, we can use that right away. Before it comes into your home or business, they're going to add in a chemical. It's called a captain. It's an additive. You want that there. It's, a, it's an odorant so that you can smell if you let that natural gas on. Okay? So that's why that's intended. Natural gas can also be further processed. This is where we get helium from. This is where we get propane from. This is where we get butane and pentanes and all the other tame families, okay? So again, the average person in the United States uses three gallons of refined products each day. Now, Ohio oil, much different than maybe what you're getting out in California. It's very thin here, easy to refine, okay? In fact, the very first thing that's refined off of our crude oil is a paraffin or wax. This is where you get a lot of lubricants, inks, Plastics, cosmetics, and other products that we use today. If any of you ever used Vaseline, what is Vaseline? It's just pure petroleum gel. In fact, when crude oil was discovered here uh, in the state of Ohio, uh, there were many companies that were formed back then. There was a lady by the name of Mabel Williams that took crude oil over an open flame, cooked it to a black residue. Her company today is Maybelline. Uh, if you think about, again, Vaseline or, uh, again, many of the other products, the very first uses for crude oil, what is oil and gas? It's old plant and animal life. It was some of the first all-natural medicines, and people would take the crude oil and drink it straight up as medicine. Now, I don't know about you, I kind of like the grape and cherry flavor and stuff.